Hello everybody, welcome back to more exciting times in Plants vs. Zombies. So, we got five more levels left in the Fog World. And well, Fanes ain't getting any less spooky or any less difficult, so let's just get started right now, shall we? Alright, Artie's backyard, so... Last episode ended with a little bit of a question. We got a new plant called the Split Pea that lets us shoot forwards and backwards. And I ask you, well, why in the world would we ever want to shoot backwards? And that's because of this one new zombie type. The Digger Zombie. Oh boy, he's... He basically will force you to rethink the entire way that you plan your defense. So, the Digger Zombie's weird in that he will tunnel underneath all of your plants pop up right at the end of the lawn, uh, right next to your house, but instead of just immediately entering your house, he will turn around and actually attack your plants from left to right, instead of right to left. Now, because all of our plants shoot to the right, we won't be able to counter him this way. However, this is where Split Pea comes in handy, because Split Pea just acts like a pea shooter for most of the time, but he has a repeater head stuck on the back of him, which means he'll be shooting two peas backwards at a time. So, as long as we use these guys properly, we'll be able to counter the Digger Zombie. Now the problem is, even if we use Split Peas, if we put our Sun Producers all the way at the back of the lawn like we've been doing, he'll still chew through those. So, we'll have to plan our defense properly. So, we want Puff Shrooms, we want Sun Shrooms, we want Lily Pads, we want Split Pea, we want Blover. Yeah, I, I still prefer Blover to using Planterns and Walnuts. It's, a, it's up to you if you feel the same way or not. We will not be taking Scaredy Shrooms on this level, because the Digger Zombie kind of ruins Scaredy Shroom strategies, because him tunneling underneath everything will make them cower, and because he pops up at the back, he'll make them cower anyway, so they're pretty bad now. Um... I will take... Fume Shroom. I'll take Doom Shroom. And what else? Maybe a Squash? Should I bring Sea Shrooms again? Nah. Uh, maybe squash, actually. No, I'll take ice shroom. There we go. So we're going to do spins a little bit differently. So instead of putting our sun shrooms way in the back, we're actually going to put them right here and leave two squares in between. And again, this is what we're doing just because of the existence of digger zombies. Kind of annoying. So again, Split Peas kind of suck, except that you need to use them to counter this one specific zombie type. That part is annoying. Yeah, so you'll never really see any use of Split Pea on any level that doesn't have the Digger Zombies, but... Eh. At least they're an effective way of taking out the diggers. And at this moment in time, the only real way of effectively dealing with diggers. Unless you want to rely exclusively on things like squash, who can jump backwards, or like cherry bombs. But those get expensive and have a slow recharge, so they can't take out a bunch of diggers one after the other. I will, however, still be putting my sunshrooms in the very back on the water. And the reason for that is digger zombies obviously can't go through the water. Not enough sun. Well, now I have enough sun. <laughs> I have no sun! Different kind of sun. <laughs> yeah, I've been so careful while making everything symmetric in this, and then I go and do this on you. Sorry, but also not really sorry. <laughs> Ooh, present. Puzzle mode unlocked. Play it from the main menu. Cool. I'll do just that. Okay, we got our first digger zombie. He's all the way at the bottom. As you can see, he's digging for all the soil. So we're going to put a split pea right there and leave one square in between. The digger zombie is slow, so there should be enough space for the repeater to, for the split pea to just kill him before he can reach the split pea and do any real damage. There we go. It's beautiful.
So that's why I said to leave two squares in between. We will not be using these back lanes unless I really... If you want, you can put two split peas there in a row. And they can both shoot at the digger zombie, but the digger zombie will still be able to start eating the first split pea. He probably won't kill him by himself, but if another digger zombie comes along, he probably will. Oh yeah! I forgot we have to defend the aquatic part as well. Whoops. Silly me. Uh oh. I might- Ah no! Don't click away. I may want to invest in a Doom Shroom right here. After all the zombies pop up from the water. Yeah. I completely forgot that the pool even existed. My, I am dumb. Oh boy. Oh shoot. <laughs> Ooh, you guys, do you know what I'm gonna do? Big brain time right here. Put a split pea in front of him so that he'll deal more damage by shooting backwards. Eh? What do you think? And here we get another new plant, a very quirky one. We get star fruit. Costs 125 sun, shoots stars in five directions. So the star fruit will shoot stars, which have basically the same firing rate and power of peas, except they don't synergize with torchwood. And they'll shoot one straight up, straight down, straight backwards, and then up at a diagonal and down at a diagonal. So they basically just don't shoot straight forwards, but they shoot up and down. They can be weird plants to use, because again, the fact that they can't shoot straight forward means that they can be tough to f hit zombies with, but if you have enough of them, they can just massacre zombies. So they're actually pretty fun to play around with. You could argue they're actually some of the best bane for your buck, because again, it's basically for a slightly more expensive pea shooter, but you get basically five pea shooters out of this, just in different directions. They can be tough to use, but they're also very fun, and we're gonna take advantage of them. That sounded wrong. Alright, this, we got some tough guys. We got digger zombies again, bucket zombies, and uh, jack-in-the-box zombies. Fun. Alright, Puff Shroom, Sun Shroom, Lily Pad, that'll be fine. I want to try out Starfruit. Normally I use Split Peas to deal with the Digger Zombies, but you can also use Starfruit. We're just going to have to get a little more creative with the Starfruit. That's how it's going to work. Um, what else? Humbity, humbity, humbity. Again, not using the Scarity Shrooms. We will take Doom Shrooms. We'll take Fume Shrooms, I guess. Actually... No, we won't be taking Fume Shrooms. I think I'll go back to Planterns and Walnuts. I think that's what we'll do. And... Well, let's see. I guess we could take Fume Shrooms if we wanted. Or Tangle Kelp. If there, if there are some, like, tough... Nah, I'm not worried about the water enemies. With Starfruit, because Starfruit shoot up and down, if we put Starfruit on land, they'll take care of the aquatic enemies for us anyway. So that's actually really nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm actually really thinking about this. I think I'll take Ice Shroom again. I plan on using mostly Starfruit. Oh, look at look at all that fog. Look at all that fog. Good lord. This is the highest amount of fog you can get on a, a single level. Fun. I so now there's so much fog I can't even see where the puff shrooms are shooting, so I don't see which lane the zombies are coming in. They might be coming in on the bottom lane. Yep, they're on the bottom lane. Lovely. Of course, it was the one I started putting plants down in for the um, the last.
All right, that that's nice. Now we can see a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I really need to get enough for a, a walnut. There we go. I'm actually gonna put now all of my star, all of my star, all of my sun shrooms in the, these two lanes, these two columns. Blah. Because again, in order to deal with the digger zombies, we're gonna need to use our star fruit, and a single star fruit here is not going to be enough to accurately take them down. Oh, hi. So I'll try to show off the star fruit now. So here's Starfruit. I guess he's not really doing anything, because he needs to be in exactly the right place. Oh man, that walnut's already almost dead. Good lord. There we go. So Starfruit was shooting straight down to hit him. Oh, that's beautiful. So that Starfruit right there can attack the zombies that are eating this. So again, one or two starfruit all by themselves, not very good. If you can get a bunch of starfruit though, they are fantastic. Also, if a zombie gets close enough to a starfruit, then they then the two shots they shoot straight forward, they shoot in the diagonals will hit the guy right in front of them. However, at that point, it is a little risky because at that point the zombies will actually be inflicting damage on them. So I want, I need Starfruit all the way back here on these lily pads to deal with the digger zombies that are going up and down. So yeah, Starfruit are pretty interesting plants. You can suffer a little bit early on in the... Uh oh. That's not good. We're, I want a Doom Shroom for him. Boom! I mean, Doom! Doom on you. Start getting ready to... Uh oh Gotta protect our planterns. No, my star fruit. How dare you. There we go. Uh oh. I don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, if you can get a full column of starfruits, you're going to be in a pretty good situation. Because they will, they together they'll take out most things that come their way. Like, look at how fast that bucket zombie's dying to the starfruit. No, my plants are Bring that back. I thought that starfruit would hit him by shooting down. I guess he kind of is? He's at least trying. Oh, 
Oh, you're not gonna get very much far. So yeah, I generally... Oh, come on, really. I generally don't recommend Starfruit for nighttime levels. I find that split peas do better, as well as things like, well, just puff shrooms and fume shrooms. But when done right, Starfruit can be very, very good. Wow, that just destroyed everything except for the digger. There we go. Here's our new plant. I've been looking forward to this one. This is- this one's gonna change things a little bit. You got a new plant? The pumpkin. Costs 125 sun. Protects plants that are within its shell. So this is basically a tall- so this is basically a walnut with more HP, kind of like the tall nut. But it doesn't take up any space. You can put plants in- you can put a plant inside of it. So now we can put planters down and put pumpkins on top of them so that way it saves some space and makes them more durable. It's better than putting walnuts in front of them because if you put- Generally you have to put the plant turns pretty close to where the zombie spawn is, which means you have to put the walnut even closer, which means even if you have enough firepower to take out the zombies pretty quickly, and unless you can take them out like within a couple of seconds, they're going to reach the walnut and start eating them. Whereas this will buy you an extra square, and that oftentimes can make a lot of difference. Plus, plant pumpkins have a lot more versatility than just being used on top of planterns. This introduces us to a new enemy. This is the Pogo Zombie. Zombie on a pogo stick who will jump over all of your plants one after another. And he's fairly quick. Of course, Tallnut can stop him, so that's pretty nice. Alright, Puff Shroom, Sun Shroom, Lily Pad, yada yada. I don't like lanterns. Here's the thing. I well, I do want to show off pumpkin. I want. I always want to show off the most recent plant that we've gotten. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll do plantern as well. We don't have any digger zombies, so we don't need split peas or star fruits. No balloon zombies, so no need for cactus. Ah, uh, let's see. We can use scaredy shrooms again. That's nice. Fume shroom. And Doom Shroom. Doom Shroom is always a good bet. Alright, this is another maximum foggy level. Now, here's the thing. There's actually an achievement in the game, at least there was in the iPhone version, for clearing a maximum fog level without using planterns or blovers. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try to use that, see if I can pull it off. I'm gonna see if I can get for this level without using planterns. Now, because I've actually taken planterns on the level, I'm not sure if that means they'll be like, oh, you used planterns, like, even if I don't actually plant any, but I'll, I'll just show it off. I'll see, I'll, I'll challenge myself to that, see if I can do it. And because there are no digger zombies, we can finally put our, our sun shrooms in the back of the lawn again. That's very nice. I like keeping my sun producers away from zombies. You would not believe how much of a difference just not having sun fall from the sky makes. It makes a huge difference. I can't even see where I'm putting these, but because they're expendable, I don't really care. zombie oh no oh he has almost no HP too he was about to die that is one of the shames of not being able to see where your fans are coming from well he took out a lawnmower good for him I guess
I can see the top of that zombie's head. In the top lane, you can kind of see what is coming. Not always, though. Alright, I, I need to have a huge amount of puff shrimps on the bottom now, because the bottom lawnmower is gone. Uh-oh, huge wave of zombies is approaching. I have a lot of sun now, I should probably take advantage of it. Final wave already? Sweet. Doom. Alright, there we go. We didn't see basically any of the zombies, but we did it. I wonder if that gives us an achievement. No, that achievement might not be in this one. Or it might have said, oh, because you chose plant, uh, planterns as your plant, it doesn't count. We get a new plant, though. Magnet Shroom. Removes helmets and other metal objects from zombies. This is a very nice, uh, this is a very nice plant. It can remove buckets from bucket zombies. It can remove screen doors from screen door zombies. Helmets from football zombies. Uh, it can remove... Uh, pogo sticks from pogo stick zombies, jack in the boxes from jack in the box zombies, and they can also remove the pickaxes from digger zombies. So if if they remove a pickaxe from a digger zombie, the digger zombie will stop digging and pop up. However, at that point, the digger zombie will start moving to the left rather than the right. So we'll start moving with the other zombies. Magnet Shroom is very good though, especially especially for dealing with the pogo zombies. All right, and we also have balloon zombies again. So let's take the usuals. We want Blover. We want Magnet Shroom. See, Magnet Shroom is great for taking out the Pogo Zombies, and Tall Nuts can also stop them, too. So, you got some options. Love me some Scaredy Shrooms. Love me some Doom Shrooms. One more. We didn't actually ever use the Pumpkins last uh, course. Partly because the last course was a lot shorter than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be more than one wave. Yeah, the fog levels thus far have been shorter than the pool levels on average. The daytime pool levels. Brains. Brains? Fun, fun. I, I, this, the main reason I don't like the fog levels is just, at the beginning, you cannot see what's coming towards you. Doesn't sound that bad, but it kind of is. Same old. We've actually had some close calls here. We've had to use two lawnmowers. I cannot neglect the pool anymore. Let's, let's get a good look at Alright, here we go. I love being able to see. There we go. Now here come the water enemies. Keep that fog away from here. Yeah, so it is a little bit of like a coin flip whether you prefer using the planterns and just have to plant them once and protect them, or if you prefer using blovers. I prefer blovers. You can make an argument that they're nowhere near as cost effective, but they're more fun and they're not as annoying to deal with.
Alright, so now I'll show off the magnet shrooms. Boom! We tracked the bucket off of him. And now I'll also show off the pumpkins once we get enough sun. Put a pumpkin on top of the magnet shroom. Boom. The magnet shroom now basically has as much HP as a tall nut. Which is wonderful. We need one down here as well. Being able to just magnetically attract things like buckets off of zombies make them way less frightening. Not the lane I wanted to put them in, but alright. Also, magnet shrooms have a nice fast recharge, so you can plant a bunch of them. Hi, Mr. Balloon Zombie. You're not getting any farther than that. Magnet shrooms are weird because it's like it's literally a, mag a magnet attached to a regular mushroom. But I guess it's kind of funny as well. Generally, you don't need too many magnet shrooms, but it also depends on what level you're playing. Because there are some levels later on in the game where uh, there will be a lot of zombies with metallic objects, and some metal objects are much more annoying to deal with than others. get away with that? Doom on you! Did we kill everything except that, doofus? <laughs> Hope you like eating pumpkin, because you're going to be eating it for a while. <laughs> no, you're not. Alright, here we go. Final, final note of the world, let's see what it says. Hello, this is your mother. Please come over to my house for meatloaf. Leave your front door open and your lawn unguarded. Sincerely, Mom, not the zombies. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, guys. This seems pretty legit. <laughs> Alright, guess we're going off to see our mom then. Next level. Uh, why'd it get so dark all of a sudden? This can't be good. Oh well, hope you survived the night. So this is the last level of the fog world. And, well, the fog's gone, which is nice. The bad news is, that's not a good thing. There's constant lightning flashes that will give us light, otherwise, we're in pitch darkness. Have fun! So I recommend putting cacti- oh shoot, I should not be putting things in the very back. The reason for that being, there are digger zombies that will be coming. So that- oh man, I forgot. Yeah, leave a gap. Sea Shroom, alright. Is there no music on this level? I thought there was going to be music on this level. Jeez. The fact- I don't remember there only being, like, lightning on this level. I thought there was music. Guess not. Oh man, and the fact that you can't even see what's happening on the level for most of it. Yeah, this is why the is many people's least favorite level in the game. It's definitely one of mine. Well, we're getting plenty of sea shrooms, I guess. Yikes. <laughs> It really feels like this level should have some kind of music. Maybe something dark and creepy. Can I please get another cactus? Or like a split pea? Because there's a lot of zombies down there. Oh, thank you. 
my my star fruit are not doing squat. Bulvers do not blow away the darkness, by the way. The only thing that bulvers do is uh, get rid of balloon zombies. So they're not very good. Gotta keep that starfruit protected. Now things are starting to look up a little bit. All we needed was some straight shooters, so to speak. Although I could definitely go for more split peas, because um, there will be digger zombies coming. And I don't have great confidence that my starfruit will be able to hold their own. No! My plants! Stop eating them! Uh-oh. That's not good. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. The fact that you can't even see what's happening actually makes this kind of frightening. It is a zombie apocalypse after all. Uh, can you get rid of that guy's pogo stick? Thank you. Alright, the only thing I'm worried about at this point are the digger zombies, because, wow, I've only gotten one split pea, which is kind of crazy. But we have enough magnet shrooms to kind of keep them at bay, which is nice. Here, I guess I'll put some star fruit back there. What am I supposed to do with the Blovers? It really feels... Yeah, I'll just show you. See, Blover does not get rid of the darkness. Only gets rid of balloon zombies. Alright, but we're doing, we're doing well now. Oh man, I forgot. <laughs> the Jack in the Box zombies have the creepy sound effect. You know they're coming, you just don't know where from. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. I can't believe we only got one split pea that entire game. <laughs> Come on, come on, just a little more. There we go, yes. We did it. Oh, man, that level was kind of scary. We get a new plant, the Cabbage Pult. Hurls cabbage is at the enemy. So this is like a kind of a trebuchet where it'll like lob cabbages on people's head. It's, it's interesting, it's kind of an alternate version of Pea Shooter. We'll get into why that guy can be useful next time on Plants vs. Zombies. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Yep, yeah, next time we're off to the final world of the game. Only, only 10 levels left of adventure mode before we clear everything. So, those last 10 levels are definitely a bit of a trip. And they're, and in my opinion, a big improvement on the foggy levels. Yeah, I'm not a huge... The fog levels are annoying. Those are the ones that I'm always like, Duh, I have to play for these again. But the last world is pretty good. So, I look forward to playing in that. Hope you guys tune in next time. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day and God bless.